morning, good morning, and it's a very good morning today. We, uh, it's a temperature change, though, isn't it? I got up to feed my chickens. I was like, "What happened? What happened overnight?" So, yeah. But, anyways, uh, that's Minnesota for you, right? Well, last week we did something kind of intense, and um, we talked about the battle ram. The Lord had given me the word battle ram or battering ram, depending on, um, you know, what versions you're reading or, or what you're referring to, but it does refer to the same thing. And the battering ram was that device that they built um, to ram the walls of a city or to ram the door of a city to knock things down. And... Um, or just break into them, right? And usually it's a specific to a spot because they couldn't do one that just was the size of the door, right? It's it's really to hit the middle of the door or hit, you know, the middle of the, the bridge or whatever they were trying to uh, break into and create a weakness so the whole thing would fall. And, um, and so in prayer, that's what he had us do last Sunday, and that got kind of intense in the sense of, of I'm always looking like, well, you can't see what's going on unless the Lord gives you a, a vision of something while you're praying, um, but we're seeing results. We're seeing results of those prayers. You realize Friday Night Freedom, how many of you are here for Friday Night Freedom? Uh, there was, there's a lady in the north that uh, the Lord just gave her strict instructions to drive someone's house because they had blocked her, you know, from uh, calling to see because she was going to invite them to church. <laughs> and she got in her car, and she went over there and said, you blocked my call. And they were like, yeah, I know. I don't know. She's like, get in the car. So she brought two of them. They were setting up in the front here, and... Um, the one lady, why it was so intense is the one lady had died the week before and was resuscitated. So, and they both came to Christ at Friday Night Freedom. I believe that's a result of, of the battering ram, right? And then there's a, another person um, who overdosed and could have had the same thing, came to Christ. Um, you know, so we are at 89 people now. Ooh, I so wanted that barrier to break. We have four people re-dedicate re, uh, their lives last night, but I don't count rededications. I'm like, I want, I want the first time souls. And when I take a look through, you know, where Tom Scarella had spoke over me, 100 fires in the north, 100 fires. Um, if those are people, which I, I would really like it to be bigger than that, but, you know, if those are individuals, um, you know, it's really important to try to figure out where are all these people from. The majority of them are from the north, whether it be Bach. One person just got saved from Bach. Um, Ogilvy um, and uh, Hinckley. He had someone saved from Hinckley. So, you know, Pine City, Mora, a lot from Mora. So we know that um, our prayers are effective and the battering ram is working. And I believe that only came out of just a, just we hit something and there's a weakness there, right? And we're trying to find what's well, the weakness in these cities or whatever. And you batter them with your prayers and it breaks down the doors or the walls. And uh, the people that belong to the Lord are hidden behind those walls and they're going to come out. Amen. And so we're going to see more and more results of that. We've talked here before on intercessory prayer and really praying those types of prayer as a form of intercessory prayer, which is different than a general prayer. You, know, you can have a general prayer or going down the Lord's prayer can be used for intercessory prayer. The Lord leads you to do that. Um, but it usually doesn't sound like our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, you know, like people do that they're like let's bust a move something bad happened let's pray the lord's prayer and then we say it and like i've explained here before we don't know half of what we're saying and then the translation um translated it like as if it's still we're asking him to do something he already did uh when really it's tran translated in certain in certain parts of the prayer um instead of give us this day our daily bread you give us this day our daily bread Right? It's a declaration. It's not like, I hope you do something, God. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and we're to pray this daily, right? So I doubt the majority of the church does that. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Um, just praying that daily. And if you do, and you're not understanding what you're praying, it's very ritualistic, and it's really not moving the heavenlies, even though we're being obedient. When we... Um, when we take it apart, though, uh, just like Pastor vern has been talking some about the names of God, I've talked about it. We've got a handbook on all kinds of the names of God, and you want to get a hold of that. Um, to be able to just know when we pray, our Father. Well, who is our Father? Jehovah, the God of covenant, the God of promise, right? Um, who art in heaven. So that's different. We are saying who the Father is. Well, who is the Father in your prayer today? Is he Jehovah Sabaoth because there's a war and an appointed time going on? Is he Adonai? Is he the creative God for you? He's all of those names, but we're acknowledging our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And intercessory prayer will take the Lord's Prayer and just pray sections of it. And it doesn't sound like the traditional our Father who art in heaven, you know. It's, it's you're praying out those verses. Amen? And um, so let me, um, intercessory prayer or intercession in the Greek means to pray, intercede for, to entreat, or meet with a person for the purpose of supplication or source. It also means bending over to intercede on someone's behalf or to make a petition. That's, that includes a lot of stuff right? To intercede. Um, if I'm going to intercede on something, I'm also coming between this thing that's trying to attack um, and standing there and saying, no, you may not. I'm be coming between and saying, uh -uh. I'm standing in the gap and saying, no, you can't touch that, right? So part of the battering ram uh, has a little bit different um, part of that. It's literally we can be bending over on someone's behalf. Have you ever interceded and the Lord just started to pray through you and you could hardly even talk? It felt like you were going to vomit. It's like, you know, you're trying and you're, you're literally bent over because Holy Spirit's praying through you in such a way that it's just like all consuming. You're just like, wah, you know, you couldn't say it as big as you feel it in that moment. Right? So there's something to that. There's something to the word intercession, to pray, intercede for, to entreat, or meet with a person for the purpose of supplication. So you're coming into intercession. Um, but bending over to intercede on someone's behalf or to make a petition. Now, petition, uh, you know, we sign petitions all the time, don't we? I hope we do. <laughs> when we're coming up against different things that the government is is putting out there that we're like that's not even scriptural no we're not doing that so many times we'll sign a petition and that's a form of agreement that says here's the base we're standing on and yes we all agree so a petition before the Lord, you can petition the Lord's um, go boldly before the throne of grace in your hour of need and bring your own petition that says Lord you said right in your word, these different things. And so, therefore, I'm bringing this petition before you and invoking you to move on behalf of what you said. You showed me this. You revealed this. This is what the word says. All of those different things. And um, it's almost like you put a signature to it and you put it to the courts of heaven and petition the courts of heaven for something. Amen? Amen. But then um, the battering ram is, is literally is part of a petition of us all getting together and saying, as we face the north, you can't have those people. Open up the gates in the name of Jesus. Let my people go. <laughs> you know, all of that. And as we're, as we're praying that, um, we've already made a petition as a unit, right? Unified. And I love how it says it in, in Romans when it's talking about it in the Amplified. It says in harmony, unified in harmony. And that means we're all saying something different, but when it blends, it sounds beautiful to the throne of God. Amen? So if we know uh, intercessory prayer um, is going to break loose some things, all it takes is the one. And uh, in evangelism, I'm all about finding the one. 
You know, some people will pray, and if a crowd doesn't show up, they feel like nothing happened. No, I'm about the one. I'm about the one, and go find that one, and meet the need of that one. And that, that one coming to Christ, literally, they and their household will be saved. Well, some people have some really big families. <laughs> And they got lots of friends, and it spreads to that. But if you don't meet the needs of the one, if you don't truly love the one, then it's no sense in praying for the crowds. So it's all about the one. And then when you receive the one, to take care of the one, I'm just loving the fact that people are coming forward um, and picking up people for church. You know, we have someone uh, in the Malacca area. Another person that just recently born again. And high intensity, PTSD, all of that. So you, you just can't throw a person like that in a crowd and be like, get in there. You'll feel comfortable. No, they don't. So they have to have that one-on-one -on -one, uh, person coming alongside and saying, I'll be your friend. I'll help to make you feel comfortable. I'll help you to be introduced to other people. And man, it's been doing some things um, in these people's lives. And she sat, um, you know, on the stage with me last night just after everyone left. And, and, and she was saying, if I didn't have that, I don't think I'd be here. So you can get people born again, but then there's those next steps yep. of caring about the one. Amen. And she's very burdened by her family and the needs there. But if we don't meet the needs of the one, we can't get at. So the battering ram just freed the one. So we have to keep hitting the wall for the family, you know, bust down that door so there's an opening and there's a rescue that takes place. Hallelujah. We are racing the reaper. That's the way I look at it. When I look at people, I'm like, I am racing the reaper right now. Who's going to get there first? <laughs> so that's really that's really how it is. So um, and then I love this, that Jesus is our high priest. And it says, therefore, and this is Hebrews 7, 25. Therefore, he's able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. So he is able to save. That's what we're after salvations and completely, uh, completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede so even the lord that's how he operates and we're to imitate him so that's why it's so important um to to not just shoot up a prayer and say god we want revival well good he said good i do too <laughs> are you going to get more a specific about this what are, what are you going to do i mean are you willing to take a battle ram out and and stay on it until things open up and then Here's the, here's the other part um, for the over. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Many times as a body, uh, the church does not like to do that because if you get results, then you have to take care of it. <sighs> There's all that work and then people have needs and I don't have time for this, right? So then we'll pray for our pastors. You might have one, you might have two. Bigger churches maybe have four. Woo! <laughs> but they might have a thousand people and they're trying to meet the needs there and they're trying to take care of the people it doesn't that's not how he set it up sheep begat sheep right and they take care of each other and then the leadership is there to mature the saints so you can take care of each other and we can go get some more sheep Amen. So therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Love that scripture to know that if no one else is praying for me, he is. Amen. In the same way, this is Romans 8, 26 through 27. The spirit helps us in our weakness. So as a church, or as individuals, many times we have a weakness in that we do not know what we ought to pray for. Sometimes we'll look at a situation and it's like, I don't, I don't know. We'll walk away from it or not do anything because there's a weakness there that just goes, I really, I don't, I don't have a revelation here, right? So instead of walking away from that, who do we get the revelation from? Holy Spirit. Right. So it's not on all, you know, all on us, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through world uh, wordless groans. That's what I'm talking about. That bent over that like, whoa. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. 
So I can trust Holy Spirit that if I begin to pray in tongues, I don't, I don't know what to pray for Bach. So all of a sudden, I'll just start praying in tongues. And I might start out generally, you know, you can participate in tongues. I can start praying in tongues right now. You know, it's an act of my will to do that. But there's something happens when it crosses over to like, oh, I literally have given him my tongue, and now I'm very aware. This thing's going somewhere that I could not have predicted. And you might end up in that situation where it sounds like groans coming out of you on behalf of Bach or Ogilvy or whoever, whatever city. Um, when we go to pray for a city, many times I look up the name. Cambridge means learning by the water. That's where the name, the bridge outreach came from. So if we're learning by the water, and then the people that are drowning in the water, we're pulling them out, and they're going to cross over on the bridge to get the helps that they need. Um, and, and so, you know, many times we'll look at a city, and the name you think, oh, I don't know, that just sounds like a silly name, or what if you look it up, and you're like, oh, no wonder that's going on there. Literally. Some of them are like, whoo, that just fits that city, if you know anything about that city or whatever. Um, and so you count the cost before you go to war, but you also map out the area that you're warring for, right? And, um, and so then when you hit the wall, you know what you're after. There's no surprises. You're like, no, I know this place or this wall. This wall we talked about is the stronghold, mostly in people's minds. Um, and so people will gather to an area. They don't even know they're doing it because people think alike in that area. They think like poverty. They think like sexual sin. They think like, even though it's everywhere, um, it compiles in certain cities. When we prayed around the, the state, um, and you can check that out online and look at the map that where we poured oil and then we drive so many miles and pour oil again and, and pray. It was really interesting because the intercessors that came with us, we kept asking, what does this feel like to you? You know, each city had a different, like, whoa, what is this? Some were similar, but there was a very distinct, like, that's what stronghold is set up here. So if you're going to ram the wall, the wall is the stronghold. Amen? Even let's say that the main stronghold in a, a, in a city, let's say you got a little town like some of the towns up north are, there's little, little towns, but poverty rules there. Like you get in there, poverty rules there. So if that's your keeping strong man, strong wall with a big old gate at it, right, that says we're not going to change, this is how it is, and people gather there because, you know, it's the city I go to because it fits me. And you're thinking, right? Um, it isn't that that's the only thing there because out of poverty, believe it or not, comes sexual abuse comes more drug use because of depression. There's more alcoholics in a poverty town. Isn't that interesting? I mean, you can map that out. So you think, well, we're ramming the wall trying to get people saved, but we're praying against poverty. Yeah, because that's the stronghold that is holding those families, uh, and the wall is there to keep them from Christ, who is all prosperity. He wants us to prosper in all things at all, all times and all ways so that we might give. So their giver is shut down. The blocker to them is that they're just shut down. Well, we're not meant, we're not built like that. You know, we're built receive, give out, receive, give back, receive, give out. That's how, that's how we are emotionally. That's how we are spiritually. And if that's like a pipe and that pipe gets clogged, you want to die. You literally feel like it's at the end. It's very depressed and oppressed when that happens. So if we just think about that, um, we might think that if we're coming against poverty, we're not doing anything. Oh, man, we are messing with the strong man. That's what we're messing with in some of these cities. Make sense? Uh, some of the small times, towns many times will, there's like nothing there, um, but there'll be a strip club, and you're like, you know, you got all of like 300 people in this little town, and there'll be some major thing where people come all over, you know, to that town, and that's their source of, 
of life there or whatever. Well, the people in the town are poor in their soul and in their finances. See what I'm saying? So you, this is where the battling ram uh, comes in. And intercession then moves from, I mean, I think, we, I'm, I think we moved in the spirit last Sunday and we've seen some results, right? But when you stay on something, you might, you, you might ram it once like that and be like, okay, see, see if anything happens. Um, there's, some, there's a part where you will cross over where you're relentless. There's people God has just in the spirit has moved me over into praying for them where it's like I go to bed thinking about them. I wake up in the middle of the night and I shoot up a prayer. I'm there in the morning all the way to church. I'm praying in tongues on their behalf because it's like stay on it, stay on it, stay on it. I don't think the, the overall church does that. You can try to make yourself do that, by the way, and that's nice, and, uh, but it usually doesn't last. There's something about an honor and a relational thing with the Holy Spirit where he knows he can count on you on behalf of someone. Because you got to think about it. A lot of these people that are getting saved, 89, whoo, um, we're, on, we're on our way here. And that's an 11 and a half, well, now it's 12 weeks. Um, that's, pretty, that's pretty cool. And, and it's all glory be to God. But you got to remember, if you hear their stories, they're also laying in their bedroom at night crying their self to sleep. And then like saying things like, if there is a God, please help me. So behind the wall of these strongholds, there are prayers that go up. They're desperate prayers. And the Lord hears that. And then he searches to and fro throughout the earth. Who can I count on? Who's going to stand in the I want to show myself strong to that person. Hello, who's going to, you know. And I hate the fact that he has to search through crowds and crowds of people. Just like, oh, all right, I just went through that whole church. I went over here, still nothing. I mean, that's sad. It's sad. And he wants to show himself strong to all of them. And so the first stage is getting them born again. And they, they start to see, well, hey, there might be a different way of living. But that, they're not done cooking, just like we're not. You know, It's like we got to move to that next stage of growth. And that's a spiritual battle. So, I mean, once you open this can, it's open. Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Right. There's just something, there's something about that. And um, I have had similar evangelism. I've, I've shared a couple stories here where the Lord's had me just go into somebody's house. I didn't even know him. I was in a trailer park once when it happened. Well, many times, but the one story that I shared. And then um, I was in housing development, just walking and praying. See, when you, when you do things like that, if you're going to go for a walk, go and pray when you do. Pray for the people's houses, you know, you're walking by, Father, I just pray for salvation. I just pray, you know, as you go along. Because literally your prayer is heat-seeking the person who's crying out. I, I just, I wish God would do something. That's like the lowest level prayer ever. Because you use the word wish, there's not really faith. But he hears it. And then you're walking through a neighborhood and your prayers now are connecting. Heat seeking and all of a sudden, and the Lord will take it to even a higher level. And I've literally just gone up and knocked on a person's door and said, you know, I, I don't know. This probably seems really weird, but I was just walking through the neighborhood and praying. Do you need anything? Boom, just instant. Come in here. My son just left. He's high on drugs. You know, and it was like, boom, I ended up leading her to Christ. And we prayed for her son. See, the prayer that was inside the house connected with the prayer that was outside the house. And the whole time, I, I can remember laying in my bed at night and saying, God, if you're real, please. Please. Yeah. That's how revival gets started. There's many people crying out on that side of the wall. There's few people crying out on this side of the wall. So those prayers don't get connected the way that they should. Because once they connect, it's fire. It's dunamis. 
it'll blow the stronghold and the strong man apart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I've seen so many results. I mean, just, just this, I, you know, if I just got up here every Sunday, we just kept ramming that thing. I'd be like, and then this happened and then this happened and this, it, it, a week does not go by where it's like, well, I prayed and there just, I, I didn't see anything. Did you guys see anything? Uh, uh, cause I already know they're crying out on their side of the wall and the stronghold is here. We cry out on this side of the wall. There is going to be a connection. And then I heat seek that. I, you know, where are you? We should all be doing that. Where are you? Where's that person I prayed for? Lord, let them manifest. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, there's a great intercessor, uh, assessor that I, I read the book that um, was written. They've been gone home with the Lord a long time ago. I think their last name was Halverson's. Did you guys know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, but one, one of the times that he was in intercessory prayer, he'd be praying along, praying in tongues. And sometimes this will happen to me, but I'm sure it happened to him more intensely and more often. And I want, I want that in my life. I crave this where he's praying in tongues and all of a sudden person's name and he's praying in tongues and this person's name again. Right. And then he's like, you don't know this person. Sometimes you get the first and the last name. So one of the times, uh, all of a sudden he had this extreme pain in his stomach and ends up in the hospital over it, right? But he had kept praying that prayer and that name kept coming up. And here he's laying in a hospital bed. They had a curtain across because there's somebody on the other side of that curtain. And guess what that person's name was? The name that he prayed. And as soon as he was able to minister to that person, the pain in his body left. There was nothing wrong with him. It, it just was a tool to get him to the hospital. Intercessory prayer is wild. And we got to learn how to cross over into it. But if you can just picture, here's the stronghold. Here's the strong man. People are captured in behind there. We got to get to them. So the prayers are from here. Sometimes those prayers are battle ram prayers where it's like, oh, well, I guess we're coming through the door. You know, we're going to build us a battle ram, a petition, and it's going to be based in the word. And we are going to unleash that thing and we're going to be fervent about it. And we're just going to bash that wall or that door until it opens up. Amen. Let's stand. So this morning, I'm going to start something. I want to do this by the spirit. Um, but the little town of Bach comes to mind this morning. And um, does everybody know where that is? I'm still learning cities myself. <laughs> People here are like, you know, it's right on. And I'm like, I don't even know where that is. But I know where Bach is. And um, there's, a, there's a stronghold of poverty that's unreal. Sexual sins, drugs, all of that kind of stuff. Stemming out of that. And the Lord has asked us, to battle or batter the door of that city. Now we've taken the bus out and we've gone around and prayed, prayed all over, you know, different cities and looked up the names and everything. And, um, and, uh, but yet there's something about that city. And now we have some people that just got saved in that city. So it's like, Ooh, there's a crack in the wall. Amen. Yeah. So you can face that direction or stay facing the way that you, you want now. Um, but let's begin to pray in the spirit because we actually don't know how to pray as we ought when it comes to that city. You know, the prideful side of us will shoot out a prayer first. But really, there's a key. There's a way to hit the door. That is just going to be that battering ram hitting it by the spirit. So Back. Listen up. 
This is your hour of deliverance. By the finger of God. Uroso, we hear the cries of the people behind the wall. We hear the cries of the people, the children. We hear the cries of the people in their marriages, in their being lost, in their attempt of suicide. We hear you. Rasa, the Lord is coming for you. Ishiprasan, he will show himself strong to you. Not only will the door come down, not only will we batter it until the walls fall, let the people go. This is under command of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is uh, the God of angel armies. He is the Lord of the harvest. And he said so. We are ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we say so. We are here representing, we represent the heavenlies. And the heavenlies said, now salvation, now salvation, now it's time, now it's time. Come up, come up, come up into truth in the name of Jesus. I want to let you know, sometimes a lot of us here are seers. And God will give you a picture of a person's face or he'll give you just a sensation of like, oh, there's a person suffering a certain way. Well, that's weird. I don't, I don't think I, I'm probably just making that up. Contraire, my friend. When he gives, when you pray in the spirit and he gives you that, you go with that. And you know, what harm is it if you were wrong? But what harm is it if you don't pray and you were Right. Mm-hmm. Shit, it is in Granta Tassa. Let's see if he shows you something. La Hate se de bre se crito. Uromanda harlete que se se de de se celebre. While we're praying, the band can just come and be ready. Casson crotolo, sincreti, shiti de asu. And de casanda la re se 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 de de bre pe prasa sala hardasa. He hears the prayers of those children. He hears the cries of that wife. Ura halete se 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 de bre son tom branta na hardasa. Thank you, Lord. You're breaking up the drug deals. You're breaking them up. They're just not going to work out. It's not going to work out. People are going to get caught doing what they should have been caught doing a long time ago. There's a great awareness. The right connections will take place. Help us to love them, Lord God, enough to stay tenacity, stay in the spot of being tenacious over them. God, we receive them. We will respond with our ability. So therefore, it's our responsibility. The Lord of the harvest is wanting the souls. It's the land. It's the land he's saying, pay attention to. That's mine. That's mine. Yeshua. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Did anyone get a picture of a person or anything like that when you're praying? Anybody see something? Yeah, that's what you heard. Seeing it? Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you, Father, that you're moving on that situation, showing yourself strong, making a way out where uh, there seems to be no way in the name of Jesus. That's self 
destruction of themselves and also others bringing harm. We take authority and we bind that right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. The reason I'm asking, like we went to North Dakota, I'll just give you an example of this, to, to minister, and we we're going to be there with Brother Isaacson. And um, I don't remember if it was Bonnie or who it was. They saw something. And I saw something. And we just happened to talk to each other. And it was right before we left. And we had been interceding for that trip. And it was right before we left. Uh, what I saw correlated with what she saw. And it was like, wow, I wonder, what, I wonder who that's going to be. Right? Because we prayed for people that we knew were going to either show up for the meeting or there was going to be something there. And he was very specific about how they looked and what they were into. So as we were setting up at the hotel and bringing in the instruments and everything, I'm walking around just going, where are they? I can keep my eyes like that discerning, like you're going to see into this. Where are you? Where are you? Well, the thing that we had prayed against was witchcraft. And that literally someone would attempt to come against the meeting um, and using witchcraft. So there was nothing in the big room we were renting. So I started walking around. Well, there was a room that was being rented right next to us. And I went into that meeting. She goes, come on in. And so I did. It was absolute witchcraft going on in there. So while we're on our side praying, they're shooting up stuff, you know, prayers, you know, and atmospherical things. And they were talking all this stuff. And, and I was like, that is really interesting. And there was something specific to her name because we had also gotten the first name of a person. And it just happened to be the name of the lady running the meeting. That's why I'm saying don't, don't, you're like, I don't know, I saw some, but I don't even, that probably was me. I probably just made that up. Yeah? What's the name? Eileen. Thank you, Lord God, for Eileen right now. We lift her before the throne of God. Thank you, Lord, that that situation is being resolved, whether it's domestic violence or, or some type of torture, Lord God. As you expound on that, we pray for her. And we call forth her salvation in all aspects, the salvation of her soul and the salvation, Lord God, that will move her to safety out of situations in the mighty name of Jesus. And that which binds her she is now loose to move ahead we bind you in the name of Jesus Oh, come on, church, let's intercede. We call upon your favor and your blessing to drive out the curse, Lord God. And we are answering. And we know she's behind the wall, but we're coming through. We're coming through. There's a rescue mission in place in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So if you have time, which we do because the Bible says we're to buy up every moment in these last days because they're wicked. So we better buy up some time. You spend some time out of our savings that we had reserved for golfing or something like that. We might take some of that time and just drive through Bach. And, you know, sometimes I've met people when I've gotten the names like that. I just walk through a town, and I have this name, and someone's out working on flowers in their front yard. Hey, those are beautiful. Blah, blah, blah. What's your name? Hmm, really? <laughs> I've had that happen. Huh? But you have to take the time. There's something about the seed of time that says we actually really mean it. Amen? We're willing to spend. Did you have something? Yeah, when we were praying for Bach the first time, I saw the wall. Then I saw like a crazy horse coming up, but looking over the wall. Well, they 
they didn't know what that was. They thought it was a thing to welcome in. So they opened their gate. But then the people came out, and they were warriors of the Lord. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Let me look at my bro quick here. I don't know if I'll get the answer to it. Um, just because, right? Um, I thought I might still have it in my phone. <sighs> ah, this is interesting. Bach is a German name. Um, short for Bach Bear, right? Um, I tried to be all German there. Um, anyways, so the definition is a dark lager beer with a high alcohol content. It's a strong flavor, a malt. Um, and in it, wouldn't that be interesting to have such a bar that's located there? And the strip club, right? Okay, so isn't that interesting that the name itself is like, you, you, you could say, hey, let's go to beer tonight. Let's go to alcohol tonight. I mean, you could say that because that's the meaning of the name. That's what I'm saying. Certain towns, you look and you're like, whoa, that's interesting. That name just happens to be, and that's what's going on there. Now, another one, just in mapping, try this sometimes. It's so fun, especially if you, you know different areas. You, you look up the sayings of the city, right? So, like, if you look up, uh, you know, you had to learn the capital, right? A lot of us had to do reports on that. At least that's what they used to do. Um, reports on, on um, the capital and what's the bird of the state or what's the animal that's the favorite and all of that kind of stuff. And then they always have a saying that has to do with this is what the state is built on or the city. Cities have that same thing. Look that up. Some of them it's like, well, that ain't good. No wonder. Now mix that with the name and it gets like even more jiggy. Yeah, it's a world system we live in, and everything has been touched. So thank you, Lord God, that you are breaking down the walls, and you're using us to do it because you want to show yourself strong. Strong and mighty are you, Saboeth. Strong and mighty are you, Yeshua. The, oh, strong and mighty. And we just happen to be your ambassadors clothed in the armor of God with a well-made battle ram of your word. And we're going to keep ramming the wall. We're going to keep ramming the wall. Now, if you go up there or if you know people from there or anything and you hear any results, I mean, if I hear the results, I'm going to share right in prayer. I'm going to be like, oh, this is what happened. Because you can bet I'm going there. You can't pray something like that and just go, oh, we'll see. No, we'll see is up close and personal. We're going to see the goodness of God and his strong arm reaching out to that town and causing revival. And the Lord's going to lead us into praying for different towns because he's given us the north. He just chose that town today. Amen. Let's worship.